Welcome to our home safari. Hi, welcome to our home safari. Uh, this is World of the Insect. Uh, my name is Michelle and I'm here with Mandy, our team lead. And what you just saw or are currently seeing in my hand is a giant African millipede. Um, right now she is exhibiting a kind of a threatened posture. They curl themselves up when they think that they are going to become the next meal from a predator. Uh, it's to protect their bodies. They're really chitinous and hard exoskeleton. It, it, protects them. Um, these guys are from Africa and they're, the way that they eat is really interesting. They actually are recyclers. So they're decomposers. They eat uh, leaf litter and um, fruit that has fallen on the ground and they recycle that into really nutritious, nutrient-rich soil. So They're really neat. Um, a lot of people do get these guys confused with centipedes. Um, centipedes only have one leg per segment. These guys have two. That is kind of the way that you tell a millipede apart from a centipede. Um, there's several other differences. Um, millipedes, like giant African millipedes, are technically poisonous and can secrete a toxin called cyanide. And that cyanide is only excreted when a predator is really, really threatening them or trying to eat them. Um, and it basically makes that predator sick if they ingest it and is a deterrent. So these guys are actually, they cannot harm humans. I wouldn't advise licking your you know, fingers after holding them or anything like that, but they're not gonna hurt you. Uh, I consider them the gentle giants of the insect world. And you can see some itty bitty babies that are quickly burrowing in the soil. Because these guys usually like to hide under logs and branches in the tropical rainforest. Okay, another critter that we have here is a goliath beetle larvae or grub so you guys might if you're planting something in your backyard or digging a hole you might come across a grub that is maybe about an inch long these guys get really really big um, it all depends on the species of beetle and their life stages are very similar to that of a butterfly so they start out as an egg they will hatch into a tiny larva or grub and grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually this, this grub will make a pupal cell and will pupate in the soil underneath the ground and will then become an adult. So these guys are neat. Um, a lot of times you don't get to see the whole process of a beetle's life, lifetime because they are often found underground and their larvas, or their longest life stage is as a larva because they're trying to eat enough protein to where they can get really big. Goliath beetles are one of the heaviest beetles in the world. They're also found in Africa and a lot is unknown about how they live in the wild because again you can't see them. They're under the soil so frequently. These guys are really neat. They need a very high protein diet unlike a lot of other beetle grubs. Um, so we actually feed them koi pellets um, that look just like this. And they're basically soaked in water so they're nice and squishy and soft. And they have mandibles to kind of ingest them. Now what you'll see in a second is this grub is about to dig its way underneath the soil. That's what they do best. They don't like to stay on the surface because they're really vulnerable from predators. Yeah, so the adult will look very much like Greta there on the wall. Um, 
They're very large beetle, you can't really tell from that picture, but they can get up to about the size and length of my hand. So imagine this grub turning into a beetle about the size of my hand. <laughs> Adam asked if they have eyes. Can they see? So the grubs do have eyes. Yes, it's a good question. Um, it's They're hard to see. They're kind of up here. Um, they can see, but they don't really need to. They use their antenna to kind of feel around and find food. They also have those six legs, which a lot of grubs don't use. They're kind of like prehensile, but these guys can actually, they're predatory, so they'll actually grab prey with those legs. It's a good question. Did you already talk about what they eat? So in the wild, these guys can eat compost, so that's what they're in is a leaf litter material, um, but most of their diet comes from the prey that they can find. So that would include earthworms, crickets, any kind of protein source that they can find. Um, if they come across a carcass of some sort, they might pick on that a little bit too for additional protein. So Michelle's talked a lot about uh, some of our insects and other invertebrates that are detritivores or they might eat fruit. And I'm going to talk a little bit about one of our Brazilian white knee tarantulas in here. This is a youngster, so it's not full grown yet. And hopefully she's hungry and will eat for us. If not, well, we'll write it down and check on it tomorrow and see if she's eaten it. This could go really quickly, so we'll see. Um, we're going to feed her a cricket. And tarantulas use uh, what we call chelicerae, or a lot of people might call them fangs, to subdue their prey. And they are venomous, so they will inject a venom into their prey. All right, so I'm gonna drop a cricket in here. And there she goes, she's got it. So she's um, injecting prey into that cricket right now. And um, after it has Died. She will also inject digestive enzymes into that cricket and will then start to chew it up with her chelicerae and squeeze all the juices out of it. It's an interesting way to eat your food, right? Sophia asked if those make good pets. So tarantulas in general can make decent pets, but you do have to be really careful about where you're purchasing them from. A lot of tarantulas are either endangered in the wild or their habitat is endangered. And so you really want to make sure you do your homework and you're doing it responsibly. Um, but tarantulas can live for a very long time. And if they are well cared for, yes. But my general go-to answer is no, maybe don't have a zoo animal as a pet. So <laughs> it's a good question. Alex asked if they have any predators. Um, tarantulas. Uh, do have predators. Actually, one very common one is going to be a tarantula hawk, so another insect, in fact. Um, they'll actually hunt tarantulas and they will uh, sting them. This hawk, or I'm sorry, a tarantula hawk is a type of wasp. It'll sting um, the tarantula and actually feed it to its young. So it's, it's also a pretty gruesome story, but that's one really common predator of tarantulas. Nancy asked, How do you become insect keeper. <laughs> well, Michelle and I actually both started here as interns. Um, I started here as an intern in 2010 and Michelle was just a few years behind me. Um, and we both studied biology or zoology at a university, um, which is pretty standard for the industry now to go after a four-year degree first. Uh, and beyond that, volunteering is a good way to get your foot in the door or um, pursuing an internship or any sort of thing like that. Being willing to move across the country helps too. Zookeeper jobs are few and far between. So um, up here I have some molts of tarantulas. So as tarantulas grow, their skin does not grow with them. Their skin meaning their exoskeleton. So they have to shed their skin periodically. These are not live tarantulas up here. These are shed skins or molts, if you want to call them that. Um, so I'll show one here. I'll flip it over so you can see those um, fangs or chelicerae that I was talking about, you can see it in the molt right here. So as the tarantula grows and it needs to shed its skin, it'll actually flip upside down and push its old exoskeleton off of itself. And a lot of people will think that their tarantula has died and it hasn't, it's just shedding its skin 
And you'll come in the next day and you'll find what you think is two tarantulas <laughs> in its habitat. And there's a variety of species up here that we've had over the years. Uh, here's a white knee mole, which is the uh, species that we were watching eat earlier. Nathan asked, why are they hairy? Oh, that's a really good question. So um, tarantulas in this hemisphere are hairy, especially on their abdomen. They have what we call urticating hairs. And the tarantulas will actually flick those hairs off of their abdomen with their back legs. And the hairs are an irritant. So it can get inside of the eyes of a predator to help scare away the predator or to at least distract the predator enough for the tarantula to get away. Um, so it's a really good defense mechanism. Presley wanted to know if they can hurt humans. Yes, uh, certainly their bite hurts and they do have a venom. Um, I don't know of any species of tarantula in the world that is, quote, deadly. Certainly they would ruin your day, <laughs> but um, unless you're like allergic or you go into anaphylactic shock, I don't know of a tarantula that could just outright kill you. Is that particular species endangered? No, it's not in danger, but its habitat is certainly threatened because they come from the uh, Amazon basin, so the northern half of Brazil. Um, and so rainforests are certainly under a lot of pressure. All right, so we've talked about something predatory. Let's move on to, this is one of our leaf-eating insects. These are called thorny double walking sticks. So I have them in this habitat here. This is a plant called um, viburnum that we cut on zoo grounds that horticulture actually grows for us. And I'm gonna lift up this piece of bark back here and there are a whole bunch of walking sticks on it. Are you ready? Check it out. So these are species that come um, from Northern Australia and parts of Papua New Guinea. And you can see there's some babies here, some little hatchlings. These largest uh, of them are female. And the ones that are slightly smaller, this is a male right here. Males have these huge spikes inside their back legs that they use for defense. I don't know if you can see that on, on camera. And the males also, I don't know if you can smell it, but they let off a skunk-like smell, which is pretty interesting defense mechanism. It doesn't stick in your clothing like actual skunk spray would, but it's an effective deterrent. And so nobody's munching right now. This species is actually nocturnal. So during the day, they're gonna be found clustered together like this. Uh, on the sides of trees doing their best to look like tree bark so that they don't get eaten. Lots of birds, lots of reptiles would love to make a meal out of them. And so they, they use their camouflage to stay safe. We have another question about the tarantula. Sure. Um, do their venom work the same as a snake's? Oh, like um, whether it's a hemotoxin or a neurotoxin? That is a really good question. Or maybe it's how they inject the venom? I so don't they know. do inject it through their fangs or through their chelicerae, so it is similar in that way, yes. Sarah asks, how many bugs do we have at the zoo? <laughs> That's a hard question. We have around 50 species at any given time here, and we're in the um, business of, of um, not collecting them out of the wild, but we'll actually breed them here at the zoo so that we're not constantly taking them, so that we have overlapping generations, we have them to put on display and to help educate people without having to take them out of the wild. Dylan wants to know if the walking sticks are poisonous. The walking sticks are not poisonous, so you, uh, or venomous for that matter, so you could eat them if you really wanted to. Um, they couldn't bite you and inject a venom or anything like that. They're harmless. They look a little scary, I know, but they're totally harmless. All right, so I know that there's a, a link that you guys can follow along today and do an at-home art project where you can make bugs out of stuff that you find in your house and in your own backyard. So you can give anything two legs per body segment for millipedes and remember, arachnids have eight legs, right? And all insects have six legs. <laughs> and um, during these difficult times, guys, we really would appreciate it if you are in a position to be able to donate. That would be really, really awesome. So click that link if you can. Thank you. Thank you.